Hello everyone, we will continue the topic exception class and in the previous videos, we finished with the practical part. We created two exception class, one exception class without messages of message class, one exception class with message of message class. And yes, whenever we created our own exception class, by default, the super class is CX underscore static underscore check. And I told you whenever we are going for CX underscore static underscore check, it will do the check at the compile time also as well as at the run time also. And I showed you the practical when I raised the exception and I have not cached the exception, I got a warning at the compile time also. And yes, definitely it will be a check at the run time also. Now what I will do, rather than going for CX underscore static check, I will show you the demo through CX underscore dynamic check so that you can understand that CX underscore dynamic check will not be checked at the compile time. It is only only at the run time. So major motto of this video is to understand the difference between CX static check and CX dynamic check. So what I will do, I will create a exception class. I will go to SC24 transaction code and I will create a exception class. Suppose this is our third exception class. I will go for create. Now, rather than CX underscore static check, I will go for CX underscore dynamic check. Now, I will give the short description. Suppose exception class for order details. I can go by any way with messages of message class or without messages of message class. Suppose I will use with messages of message class. I will go for local object. Now I will simply go for text and suppose I will go for message text. I will go use the same to same message class. Message number. Suppose I will go for 000. Now I will go for now another exception ID. Same to same I am doing. And I will use the message text. 001. I will go for a attribute. You can see we have same to same attributes here. Suppose I will go for a attribute lb underscore order instant attribute public and suppose the type of the attribute is the data element of order number. I will pass. I will pass that attribute. So our exception class is ready. But in this exception class, rather than CX underscore static check, I used CX underscore dynamic check. Now what I will do, I will make a copy of this program. I will create a program. Then in that program, I will use this exception class. I will not make a copy. Whatever is required, I will simply do the copy paste. So this is our third program. So I will write. I will give that, I will click on to create button. Demo on exception class. 
I will go for type as executable. I will go for save. Now in this program, I will again take same to same input order number. And I will open the previous program in another session because it is same to same. So I will simply do the copy paste. You can copy from the first program or second program. It is totally your wish. Suppose this is our input. I will simply activate. Now I will go for try and catch block. So I will write try. Now I will simply write if p underscore ord is initial. If we are not passing the value, now I will go for exception class. I will raise the exception. I will go to pattern button. I will go to a bad object patterns. Now I will go for raise exception and this is our exception class. But the super class of this is CX underscore dynamic check. I am going for enter. Now I will simply uncomment exporting. Suppose I will pass that text ID. This is our text ID. This is our class name. And this is the attribute of the same. Now, now we raise the exception. Suppose I am commenting this catch. We raised the exception, but we have not handled the exception. I am doing syntax check or compilation check. Have you seen? There is no warning. Yes, there is no warning that you have not handled this particular exception. The simple, simple. If this same thing I did in the first program, this is our first program or second program in which we have CX underscore static check. If I will go for this program, in this program, if you raised the exception and if you have not handled the exception, suppose if I'm commenting this system will simply, simply do me, give me a warning that you have not caught the exception because in this case, your exception class, whatever you created, the super class is CX underscore static check. So it will do the check at the compile time also. It will do the check at the run time also. Because run time also, it will throw the run time error because we have not handled the exception. But in this particular program, in this program, you have used, this is our program. This is our program. In this program, our super class is CX underscore dynamic check. So it will not do the, it will not check the handling at the compile time. It will only, only check the handling at the run time. So this is the main, main difference between the CX underscore static check and CX underscore dynamic check. And we understand the difference tactically. Generally, in 99.99% scenarios, you will always, always go for CX underscore static check. Now, the question into everyone mind, in which scenarios we should go for CX underscore dynamic check? The simple understanding. Dynamic means it should only, only check at the runtime. Just take a simple example. You are going for division of two numbers and whatever, suppose you are dividing first number by second number and you are going for second number input as zero. 
whenever you will divide the first number by zero, that is not a defined result. So whenever you are going for arithmetic operations, at that time we will go for CX underscore dynamic check. Else we always, always go for CX underscore static check because CX static check, it will tell us at the compile time itself that you have not handled this particular exception. And yes, ultimately it will go for runtime also. If you have not handled runtime, it will throw you the error. But CX underscore dynamic check, it will not do any compilation check. It's always, always at the runtime. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, I showed you the tactical difference how CX static check and CX dynamic check is there. So we created a exception class and we used the super class as CX underscore dynamic check. I raised the exception, but when I raised the exception and I have not handled, so during the compile time, it is not giving us that you have not handled the exception, but it is not the case with CX underscore static check. If you have CX underscore static check as the super class, if you are raising and you are not handling, it will give you the error. It will give you the warning. Sorry, the warning that you have not caught that particular exception. Now, generally, always, always you will go for CX underscore static check. But yes, if you have arithmetic operation like division of two numbers and at that time it is user mistake that they are passing the second input as zero. And whenever you will divide the first input by second input and division by zero is nothing. It is infinity that is not defined. So in those scenarios, we can go for CX underscore dynamic check because that is only only at check the checking at the run. Time. So that's it. It's all about the exception class. So that's it in this video. Thank you.